right let me cut across to our story here on men now having contraceptives for decades birth control has been a woman's job pills and patches iud's injections the burden of family planning has sat squarely on the lady's shoulders but that could soon change in a breakthrough that could redefine reproductive health scientists have developed a hormone free male contraceptive pill it's called the vct529 it's said to be safe reversible and it's just cleared its first human trial 16 healthy men all vasectomized took that pill daily in phase 1 trial no serious side effects no hormonal disruptions promising signs that a male birth control pill could very well be right around the corner now how does it work it blocks a vitamin a metabolite in the test it shuts down sperm production but without touching any testosterone levels in animal studies sperm counts bounced back within weeks of stopping the pill that means unlike vasectomies or condoms this could offer men a non invasive reversible option now why does this really matter for women of the 1.9 billion women globally nearly 1.164 million still don't have access to modern contraceptives thanks to stigma poor access or health risks a male pill could really ease that load it could shift some of that responsibility to the man and maybe just maybe bring some balance to the conversion uh, of the actual responsibility from a woman to a man now and of course a better conversation around family planning that a couple could have the pill now heads into phase 2 trials if all goes well it could hit the shelves in few years but here's the real question are men really ready for this science is ready are men i will stress on that question joining me uh, for a little more on that our activist brinda adige along with dr hema divakar uh, of director divakar specialty hospital i will start with our doctor on the panel first hema uh, tell me what you think of this male contraceptive i think it's a breakthrough uh, many women might think or hail this as a uh, great headway in science but yeah. um, what do yeah. what do you think <laughs> will men be acceptable of something like this yeah uh, thank you nabila it is all a question about shared responsibility and i would also think about the shared blame if you can <laughs> you know relate to that because it's not the first time that we are thinking up along the lines of the male contraceptive years ago dr talwar from india itself was you know injectable contraceptive for men then there was a pill called gossipol many decades ago which didn't stand the test of time and now we hear from uh, the um, us counterparts the vct 529 the new kid on the block well 16 men it's a short trial that they have done but if it really comes into the market and the important thing being it's reversible and it is short acting so the moment you stop it you can get back your fertility having said that the key question that you asked nabila are men ready for it i would flip it around and also ask some women in our own country they you know tell us no don't do anything to my husband it's all me you know just give everything to me and it's okay they are the ones sometimes who keep them away and just the two methodologies the barrier as in a condom and the vasectomy even then there the reluctance to use the minuscule usage of the surgical method of uh, the male contraception that is actually the reality so when this comes into the forefront it's also the women who have to change their mindset and the shared responsibility in every way for parenting for the family for the workspace and for everything at home slowly the mindset is changing but steadily so i think the new era of women will not spare the men <laughs> they are educated they will stand up to the fact that yes you know, but, but it's only medically us, speaking you know medically speaking yeah. how do you convince uh, men, men are so worried about their testosterone levels i hear men actually having conversations that i don't want to eat chewing gum i don't want to eat mint don't smoke mint cigarettes they will smoke cigarettes but they won't smoke mint cigarettes because that could decrease their sperm count stuff like that you know yeah. so men are so worried about their testosterone do you think men will show trust in this medical headway um it's both the men and women may not show trust because it's the performance at intercourse also sometimes it affects their mind though 
it's an unfounded thing that if I take this, maybe, you know, something else will go wrong with the performance. And maybe they say it is reversible. Maybe it may not be reversible. And then the accounts that you mentioned, if it is not having a substantial evidence and really, you know, it can prove that it is not reversible, then that's again a problem. So there are still some gaps and it's for decades that research has been going on of how to involve the men in this bracket of contraception. And I don't think we have succeeded yet. So even if I have to convince a couple that look here, the contraceptive options are there, both for your wife and yourself, the very little acceptance and hardly the needle has moved by 0.1% where men are involved in the contraceptive discussion and the methodology of adoption. I think we have a long way to go on that barrier. But if the science advances and the thinking of the population advances, which will take a while, of course, everything cannot happen overnight. There is still some hope for the women to feel better because they're not the only ones the willing men are willing to share the responsibility, which indeed has to be, you know, the scenario, if not in your future, at least in a while to come. That is my take on that. Okay, well, let me bring in Brinda Adige. She's done, she's dealt with lots of cases of such nature where it's always the woman taking the burden, responsibility and uh, the, the brunt. For decades, Brinda, women have shouldered this burden of contraception. So do you see this yourself as a breakthrough, as someone who've re who's really championed women's rights and uh, seeing the countless helpless women? Women can't even say no. Forget about contraceptive. Women can't, don't even have rights to their own uh, uh, reproductive system. They cannot say no to another child. That's how much they fear saying no to their in-laws and their husband. In India, many other parts of the world, I'm not saying this is India alone, uh, but... but you know, here and then, then most often it's the it's the classic uh, statement. It was a mistake. I think it might be a scientific breakthrough, breakthrough, but where men are concerned and voluntarily expecting that men would come and take this uh, contraceptive, I think it's a huge challenge. Though we know that if they can be educated and will be convinced that there will be no uh, side effects, of course, the pill is saying that there are no side effects to either their hormones or to their so-called performance. And if it really happens, then we know that at least women's burdens would be reduced. It will not go away altogether, but it would be reduced. We also know that contraceptive pills that are there for women have hormonal side effects. And it is an invasive uh, procedure also. Whereas in this one, all of that is not there. And I do hope that men understand that this is not going to do anything to their so-called manliness or masculinity. But again, like uh, doctor pointed out, it's going to take a long time because we know even today that over 90 to 95% of men don't know that a boy child is born because of the Y chromosomes in the men. And so women suffer the brunt of, you know, two girl children, three girl children, and all of the other violence that comes with it. But that said, I'm also looking at another part, uh, which is also a serious concern, especially in cases of uh, sexual assault, abuse, and rape. Uh, it is going to bring in a lot of challenges, forensic challenges, of course, uh, legal, social, and ethical challenges, because uh, we know that these are things that would be misused, sorry to use that word, uh, also because perpetrators are there out, uh, rapists are there, and we know that uh, people in positions of power, especially in institutions, or people who have control over children and women in some kind of a structural setup may also misuse something like this. And that there is no way for us to prove uh, not that we are doing great just now, but at least there is a DNA to prove that, yes, this was, rape was, uh, con you know, uh, I was subjected to rape and uh, consent was not taken. And no matter how many lies he says, there was a DNA that you could have proven. So that would become a big challenge uh, in the days to come whenever this happens. So we are looking at the government itself to look at healthcare policies and probably newer laws uh, to strengthen and safeguard women and women's positions 
and women's circumstances and situations in cases of sexual assault and rape uh, in, a, in a situation where this pill may be used by whoever that is. But that said, I think it also helps women with unintended uh, pregnancies and uh, un, you know, absolutely unrequired abortions. It should do a lot to our Indian population old. that's exploding. <laughs> Uh, no, irrespective of the population. I'm, I'm, no, but I'm, I'm certain, Brinda, would you agree? The agency for the woman. Would you agree? Aren't we certain as women? I wish we had a man on the panel, you know, now in retrospect. Uh, apologies to our viewers and the men who are watching us. But uh, I'm certain a woman would never want more than three, maybe four. I'm giving them benefit of doubt, four children. But I know of women who have five, six. I'm largely talking about women who are uh, not affluent, uh, they are not able to say no. I have a I have a lady who comes home every day. She tells me very clearly that she couldn't say no to the fifth child. It was by mistake and the in-laws insisted, so she went with it. And I've heard many of such stories and I hear them on a daily basis. So uh, I, how where do you change the mindset? You know, we have a breakthrough in science, but can will the attitude change? And should there be some kind of social conditioning that we should begin with today? Absolutely. Uh, I think, I think uh, education slowly, is the primary uh, step. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. Sure, doctor, go on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Brinda. Uh, uh, Navina, I think that slowly even the mindset here also is, you know, it, as I emphasize again, it cannot change overnight, but it is changing because if you see the fertility rate per se, there is a stagnation and there's a little bit of a dip. The population is increasing because longevity has increased. Many men and women are living longer. So overall, if you see the population, we have surpassed China even. But every educated, you know, the even the middle class, lower middle class, they are dreading to bring up more than two children. So slowly, somewhere or the other, in some pockets of the population, they are proactively thinking of limiting the family size. That is for sure. And the new era metro, uh, the couples uh, don't even want to have a single child. They'll have the pet and then they will want to enjoy their life. Even that kind of a mindset is drastically, it's coming in. That is a reality. As uh, practitioners over the last four decades, we have seen a sea change in uh, the women's attitude. They're more empowered because of education. They can earn for themselves. They have some kind of a say in a limited manner. And for the peace of the family, they may agree for a few things here and there, give and take. But again, the beti bachao, beti padao, the education and uh, economic empowerment will slowly bring in uh, that change also, I hope. But as Brinda said, it's both medical and social. The two sides of the coin that we have to look at in this issue of contraception, whether it's for men and women or women. And in fact, I would think that if the contraception for men, that too reversible comes into the market, then if the women are a little bit free from using the hormone pills, which can in the face of obesity and other comorbidities, they're having diabetes, hypertension, and they're forced to take the pill, it's a dreadful thing. And of course, there are other methods of contraception which have their own limitations. Everybody is not eligible for everything. Whereas if in that couple, if the female is not eligible medically, then the men can take the pill, then it's a, you know, it's a, it's a nice combination. So as we progress, I do hope this research which has been going on for more than about six decades and they haven't come up with anything great till now, okay? This has again, you know, it'll always renew our hope. 16 men are nothing, mice and other things, okay, they are extrapolating the data, but we need at least, uh, at least about 10,000, 1 million men going through this and then, uh, you know, uh, convincing that, yeah, even with their own choice, they can take this uh, because of the issues that Brinda said about the power uh, to... Yeah. Uh, Final uh, word, you know. Brinda, you were just saying <laughs> as, I, as we wrap here, what's the kind of social conditioning we can do and start with today? Uh, so, uh, some, something that does not dent the male ego. Well, uh, that I think <laughs> a lot more research have to, has to be done. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fragile. But that said, I think education and it beginning from my home and in my communities and certainly in school, because even today we are too shy and we don't want to talk about these things where male supremacy may be challenged. But if this bill is really in the market and on the road, it's going to challenge gender norms.
And uh, that that means we're talking of a lot of other changes. And like I mentioned, healthcare policies will also change because all of that now concentrates a lot on women. And now it would also come on to men. And I think that would be nice because it's time that we don't have to wait for 300 years for gender equality and we might just have to wait to 50 years. But let's hope that our men across India and the world would be happy to get educated and take that burden of the family and of contraceptive. Right. Uh, Lovely conversation that I had with the two of you, Brinda and Doctor. I really appreciate your time and your views there. And again, an apology to the men. I did not have one of you representing the panel here today. But, uh, well, we are listening. <laughs> Thank you.